So we started studying filament dermid syndrome about five years ago. Uh, the, the work began with a mouse model. Uh, our idea was to learn more about autism spectrum disorder in general by using single gene causes of autism spectrum disorder. And so filament dermid syndrome in particular in the Shank 3 gene, we thought of a, as a particularly valuable place to start. Uh, the Shank 3 gene, we know exactly what the function is. Right? We, we understand the Shank 3 gene to provide scaffolding to brain cell connections. And when that gene function is disrupted, the protein isn't being transcribed, and, and essentially the ability of the brain to communicate is, is affected. Even the most basic processes of learning and memory are affected. And then when you look at the, the way that kids are, we saw a lot of them having many different kinds of autism features, the social and the communication deficits and the restricted and repetitive behaviors. Um, so for us, it was really important to, to link autism with filament dermid syndrome just because of how much more awareness there was around autism and to kind of compensate for how rare filament dermid syndrome was considered to be. And we now understand filament dermid syndrome to actually be one of the more common causes of autism. So we understand autism now to be due to many, many, you know, perhaps hundreds of different genes. And, and certain rare genetic variants, when present, are, are highly pathogenic and considered to be causal in a given case. And so the, the most common example of that up until now is probably Fragile X syndrome. So when you take a, a sample of people with Fragile X syndrome, about 40% of them could have autism. And then if you take the, the universe of people with autism, probably around 1 to 2 percent have Fragile X syndrome. And then moving that into the, the PMS space, um, if you look at people with PMS, about 85 percent of them are somewhere on the autism spectrum. But then among people with autism, about a half percent to 1 percent have PMS. So we do think that PMS accounts for between a half a percent and 1 percent of autism cases.